I've been visiting France since I was a teenager, lived a few months in Provence and worked in most cities in the last five years, visiting around 150 cavistes, presenting at big festivals, events and trade accounts for Scotch whisky and rum brands. My lessons here are from working in the spirits industry, so let's dive in there just now. Hello, Hendo here and welcome to what I learned working in France. In this video, I'll share my insights representing Scotch whisky and rum brands. Scotch whisky exports to France are number one by volume and number two by value globally. So hugely important market. Many work trips started in Ile de France, staying in central Paris, either passing through, flying out to the US or Asia, taking a TGV to another part of France or Belgium. On these trips, I'd have to pivot from one national psyche to another, French being different from most others. There are 18 administrative regions, 13 in mainland France and other five overseas, subdivided into departments, then arrondissements and cantons. In Paris, it helps to know the 20 arrondissements or districts, one to 20 clockwise spiral from the center because everyone uses these on a daily basis in conversation. What I'll cover here is getting around the French psyche, being understood, etiquette, doing business, meetings, and the drinks industry. First up is getting around. Because I traveled so much and onward as well, I had to be prepared, preloaded itinerary onto my phone with route shortcuts, bookings, screenshot, and a luggage that could handle the metro. Paris is the biggest hub, but what you really notice is the transport is all linked into that, really focused, not always between provincial cities and towns. So if you need to cut across the land of France, public transport will take you up to Paris first. It can still be quicker uh, if you don't hire a car. The historical backstory to this is well told in a book called The Discovery of France by Graham Robb. I read this while trying to navigate from Cognac to Annecy via Paris. And when you're arriving at Charles de Gaulle Airport, it's usually best to jump the train, the REI line, into central Paris. They have many more taxi apps than Uber if you need to get around Paris at night. But I also enjoy walking in Paris, getting to know the district, the landmarks by foot, especially if you are working the territory. I save everything to Google Maps to make it easy for me and repeat visits to know where to visit the accounts. The French psyche. The French seem to be brought up to think that the best years are behind them. Non-French will say they love to go on strike, but there's actually a lot more going on there. Uh, and debating life in cafe culture into the wee small hours is commonplace. I'd often turn up in Paris when yellow vests were protesting, uh, you know, we vandalised shop windows. It kind of upset me a little bit though. I owned my own high street business and know what it's like with the costs of repairs and insurance. Um, I feel small businesses are unfair targets. I know workers' protest goes on back to the 19th century, but I usually stay away from chatting politics. Uh, when I'm on work trips. I'm an optimist, so always try to appeal to the jeu de vie, uh, gourmand, adventure and escapism. Uh, the French can start uh, argumentative in a conversation, then calm down over time. So it's important to recognise how opposite that is to the British psyche. The French are more open about how they are perceived in a team environment at work which I quite like. I learned to confront more and deliberately to show I noticed a behaviour or make a stand. You need to do that sometimes. I'm always patient in letting French clients elaborate to provide context, even if you want them to get to the point. 
But the single most important thing I learned is that they are a fact-based culture. French will often say en fait, in fact. I use this as a superpower, giving them a deeper insight to my industry, Scotch whiskey, way beyond what was needed to, but they respected it. I created educational tools, translated and specifically for Cavis. They absolutely loved it. Agents and distributors remarked the detail was beyond most of the category. Uh, France is changing though. The younger generation uh, below the know-it-all millennials I find most interesting. They have a passion, rekindled the heritage and this demographic is well worth learning about in France. Now to being understood, I could speak conversational French back in my 20s but lost it over time, too many short visits. In recent years my confidence dipped in the language, wary of language purists, pronunciation, grammatical structures, vocabulary and the never-ending French slang and idioms. I couldn't keep up so I just kind of gave up trying. Uh, but as a world traveller, most of my life and an empath, I can read people and react. I learned to create anecdotes that French people can understand and relate to, show how our product is relevant, localised food pairings expertly in menus, classic dishes, local cheeses, chocolate, cigars, patisserie and even French music. Let the flavours speak for themselves and I join the dots, stand back, let them experience it and debate it. I'd ask French colleagues to help translate phrases, tweak each time in the visits, update new phrases, keep printed quote note cards close by and learn to present in French the product. So explaining clearly the benefits, why and who would buy it. Across reference successes from other markets to validate like the US or Asia. Before trips, I would research and give myself a chance. Being Scottish, I had to work on my accent. Uh, it's not what you say, but how you say it. On to etiquette now. It's a French word meaning tag or label. French society still follows social rules. Manners and breeding is observed. I learned a long time ago, you must always greet people in France. Brits have kind of lost some of that when uh, you go walking into a shop or a store, for instance, they'll say nothing and think that maybe others are rude, but always say bonjour. And as in other societies like the US, the small talk that follows isn't always authentic. It's more a social check to reveal how they should deal with you. I experienced a snobbery, especially in Paris, about certain arrondissements. I tended to ignore it. I had custom and friends in all areas. Regular visits this last decade with terrorist attacks, security, strikes and unrest. I see how it's entrenched unconscious bias. Working in rum, I represented a Caribbean rum brand. The French know this category very well educated and will vocation the departments of Martinique and Guadeloupe. I was challenged at a press event in Paris, asked why me being Scottish represented a Caribbean rum, like it was cultural appropriation. I logically explained the brand was created and bottled in Scotland and we have long history of trading this way. Scottish distilling heritage includes distilling rum in the 19th century and uh, exporting equipment, techniques, cask aging, blending, bottling, branding, not just in Scotch whisky. And Bordeaux negotiating families have traded with Leith in Scotland since the 1300s. Knowledge knows no borders, but you do have to keep educating. Even the educated can learn more. Next is doing business. Hierarchy isn't so important for French people at work. I found it to be the polar opposite to China, where hierarchy is super important. A uh, French boss might choose to speak to their employee rather than a couple of clients who'd flown in from different parts of the world for dinner, which seems quite strange for other cultures, but it's just the French way. 
and they do like to speak in their own language even if they speak very good English. I could nail a pitch that went down a storm in other countries and it would fall flat to the French team. They separate home life and work life, uh, not like some other countries in Asia, and they're slow with the social media to accept things like the brand uh, group WhatsApp chats. I will say that some of the worst client management I have seen in my career was in France. Unprepared, late, abrupt, argumentative, dismissive, unrealistic timescales. Being told directly a big client forced them to give us no support at all as I stepped into their car for the first time. It was brutal and did nothing but cement cronyism in the market. A far cry from corporate excellence. I had the added challenge of three different distributors for three brands, but with valid strategic reasons. On the whole, I have terrific relationships with French employees, uh, but some completely ignored me once the business moved distributor. Uh, for years after at large festivals, I found it almost juvenile, a strange behaviour that uh, when you're obviously going to be seeing them again, France only has a few large annual industry gatherings. I'd never blank people in business, and especially if I'd worked with them and spent time with them over many years. It's not uh, the way that I was brought up anyway. Uh, that said, this was only a very small number of people, and uh, I know hundreds of trade people across France. Not speaking French, can hold you back. Meeting clients for lunch. Small talk is very important. Storytelling over lunch wins your business. After a busy morning of visits, we go to a longish brasserie lunch, then rush around the rest of the day to try and catch up. That takes us on to meetings, often late or run late, and is more an opportunity to debate rather than confirm plans. I watch my boss set out strategy, agenda, brand and business plans, KPIs, and go over performance, expecting a conclusion of actionable points they take away. But it didn't really work out that way, and noticed he'd be frustrated afterwards. But it's just a business culture, and you need to let ideas be heard. Scotch whisky industry can be quite rigid, structured, work to known processes, management follows strategic patterns, so France can be a challenge. Uh, regular contact to build relationships helps preempt and talk through before big meetings. The French appreciate the art of conversation using their logic and fact-based culture. French like to challenge the status quo, throw in a few curveballs of conflict, challenge hierarchy, deviate from meeting agendas. I got used to it and kind of expected it. Meetings don't always have a clear ending in France. I put more into building one-to-one -one relationships on the side. Working in the drinks industry, Caviste is king. There are about 5,000 independent wine stores in France. They are advocates to their communities. People trust their judgment when it comes to buying wines and spirits. So it's important to make a good impression. There are bigger stores like Intercabs, as metros like a cash and carry supplying bars and restaurants, chains like V&B, Nicolas, Cavavan, Comtois de Vignier. In Ile de France, Nissa is a chain of 60 small stores. Uh, you have flagships like La Grande Lapicerie de Paris and many others. In Paris, many cabs are small, so can only order by the bottle when it's usually cases further out the city. I work often with sales agents, about 50 or so in France. Most are freelancers, often in provincial France, Franche Comte, you have Rhone Alpes, uh, Provence, all over really. In the 90s, I worked the Vendage grape harvest in the Côte de Rhone, and I'm wine educated often visit vineyards in Bordeaux or Macon when I'm there. A couple of years back, a French agent deliberately made me present in French, even though his English was, was perfect, to give more detail to the client about the brand, who couldn't really speak English well. 
just to test me in market, like a rite of passage in a way. I expect it and like challenges anyway, so never really offended by it. The result or outcome is always my focus. I knew it would improve the attitude of the agent towards me, my brands and build rapport. So it worked because his sales were up 120% from that time onwards. In France, about 80% of Scotch whiskey sales come in the back end of the year, fourth quarter. The calendar leans that way with Beaujolais Nouveau Day is the third Thursday in November. It's a key target date for cavists and stores to have all their festive period stock fully in place. So you work back from that with orders the previous month trade engagement the month before and new stock arrival in the market by September time. August is holiday time in France so not much gets done. New lines will be decided and developed in the springtime. Brands will work that annual cycle. France is still quite traditional and conservative but have a deep appreciation for Scotch whisky, that wild Gallic cousin with Turbe. PT Whiskey being a big favourite. Now, I deliberately shared challenges in this video because that's how we learn. France is still one of my all-time favourite places to work and visit. So tell us what you think. Have you worked in France? What did you learn? I might do some more videos since I've been there so much. As always, pop your thoughts in the comments. I hope this was useful to you in some way. And until next time, Thanks very much for watching. A la prochaine.